going to deal with just a short video on joint distributions involving discrete random variables where there's only a countable number of outcomes, discrete random variables. And so going back to this probability description of sample sizes and what types of probability uh, situations are you most likely to look at, when we're only going to sample two things, there's a pretty good chance, if we're not using the multiplication rule, doing something more basic, that we're doing a joint distribution of some sort, or maybe even a linear transformation on two uh, jointly distributed variables. So we're just going to do a discrete joint distribution real quick. And so let's suppose we're doing this. Let's suppose we're going to roll a regular six-sided die, and then we're going to spin this spinner that has these outcomes, and we'll pretend that it's computer-generated and it's fair uh, in the sense that whatever the area is, that's the probability of landing on that number. So the, um, the randomness will, will be intact. Well, there's a couple things we could look at. This is a little bit of uh, um, an incorrect use of a Venn diagram, but I'm going to do it anyway just to help us to relate things. When it comes to joint distributions, arguably the most important concept is independence. Are the two random variables independent of each other? If they are, there's a lot of information that we can get from that, and there's a lot of probabilities that we can calculate. If we are not told or cannot determine that the two random variables are independent, then a lot of times, like, well, we don't know exactly what the probabilities are going to be, and so we end the problem uh, with stating that we're not sure. So let's do this. Let's go back and remind ourselves about the Venn diagram. If we had two events, so let's look at these as events for a minute. If the two events were independent, we should remember that the way to find the intersection was to multiply the two probabilities together. So let's take that idea into these discrete random variables. If, the pro if we want to find the probability of rolling a 6 and spinning a 5, knowing that the two events, let's say, were independent, then all we'd have to do is take the probability of rolling a 6, which is 1 6, multiply it by the probability of spinning a 5, it takes up 1 4th of the area, so we multiply that by 1 4th, and our probability would be 1 24th. So I'd like, as a point of reference, for us to think back to two events in a Venn diagram, and if they're independent, we can find that probability by multiplying the two probabilities together. I'll come back and clean that up in a second, but meanwhile, let's go with that thought. And now let's go to these probability distributions. When it comes to discrete random variables, we can say, all right, X, random variable X, capital X, will be the outcomes that you could get due to random chance on a regular six-sided die. So those outcomes will be one through six, all equally likely. The spinner will say the outcome there is Y, capital Y, random variable Y, and the outcomes are one, five, and 10. Now, when we see this, the probability that x equals 6, comma, y equals 5, this is very much analogous to back when we had events and saying, hey, find the probability of the intersection of these two things happening. So this, we would say we're finding the joint probability that x equals 6 and, so really you should read this with the word and in here, and y equals 5, but the only way to calculate this probability with certainty is to know that they are independent. Now these would be independent events if we're rolling a die that has nothing to do with this computer generated uh, spinner. And so they would be independent. So if this is the case, we can get this probability by taking the probability that x equals 6 times the probability that y equals 5 and we'll get our answer. And it's exactly the same answer here. The probability of x equals 6 is 1 sixth. The probability that y equals 5 is 1 fourth. Multiply them together and we get 1 24th. Now, it, it's a nice way to look at this and draw some analogies. I think it's always good in math to construct meaning for new ideas based on something that we can relate to in the past. Let's just clean this up a little bit because I did violate uh, the, the rules of mathematics a little bit. When it's a Venn diagram, there should only be one event happening. And usually with the Venn diagram, these are events, they're categorical variables. It might be that we have a person who lives in the United States and 
uh, they have a visa or something like that, to, or a passport to, to travel outside the country. So they would tend to be categorical variables that we would see in a Venn diagram, uh, but the intersection, its probability, if the two events, these would be events, are independent, you would get the probability in the intersection by multiplying the individual probabilities together. But these tend to be events, categorical variables, shown on a Venn diagram. Now, what we're dealing with over here, the reason we call these random variables is, in the world of statistics and probability, a random variable has to take on a numerical value. It can't be a person who's either a U.S. citizen or not, has a passport or not. Those are categorical variables. We're dealing with spinners that have numerical outcomes, a die that have numerical outcomes, so very important. These are discrete, random variables. The numbers that come up are random according to some probability distribution. So we know that a sixth would be rolled one-sixth of the time, but we don't know whether it's going to be the next time or five rolls from now or whenever, so it's random, but it does follow a prescribed probability distribution. So these are two discrete random variables. They have countable outcomes, and, and we go from there. Later we're going to deal in another video, and you've seen it, with continuous random variables which tend to be normally distributed so that we can do some funky, exciting stuff with those. Uh, let's see. So if we had this situation, we might have a random variable x that takes on these random values, and we might be given only one probability, the probability that we get a zero uh, for x, and these two are unknown. And then we'd have a random variable y, and uh, we'd have totally unknown results there. But then we might see a problem like this. Now these are two separate problems. So let's look at the first one. If we were told that the probability of y equaling 50 is 0.6, so if this was 0.6, and we knew that the probability that x equals 0 and y equals 50 is 0.3, are x and y independent variables? Well, if x and y were independent variables, remember, it's just like the events in a Venn diagram. If they're independent, we should be able to multiply these two probabilities together and get 0.3. The probability that x is equals 0 is 0.4, so we would take 0.4 times the probability that y equals 50, which we were told is 0.6. Now, if we take 0.4 times 0.6, we get 0.24. It's not what we see in the joint probability. So just like the two events, when they were in a Venn diagram and the intersections probability had to be what you got when you multiplied the two probabilities of the events together, if two random variables are independent, it must be that the joint probability, in this case 0.3, is what you would get if you multiplied the individual probabilities together. Since we do not get 0.3, the conclusion in that problem would be that if, uh, random variables x and y are not independent of each other. Now we go to the second problem, the problem written in green, and this time let's suppose we're told, we're given that the two random variables are independent of each other, which even as we're reading the problem we should think, aha, that means if we do a joint distribution we can multiply the individual probabilities together, that should be going through our minds. So, now we're told that the probability of y equals 50 is 0.6. So once again, this guy is 0.6. And the joint probability that x equals 10 and y equals 100 is 0.2. We want to find this guy right here. This is the guy for which we want to find the probability for. Well, we go back to the joint probability distribution. It must be true, since the variables are independent, that this probability times this probability will equal 0.2. We don't know what the probability is for x equals 10, so we will call that x right now. We do know the probability that y equals 100, because if we know that 50 is 0.6, a probability distribution, all the probabilities have to add up to 1, so by default, this number's got to be 0.4. So, if we take x times 0.4, it's got to equal 0.2. So we say, okay, we'll, we'll put the 0.4 first. So 0.4 times x, has to equal 0.2 because with joint probabilities of two independent uh, random variables, you can multiply the individual probabilities together to get that. If you solve for x, we get that x is 0.5 if you do the algebra on it. 
Well, now, once we know that this guy is 0.5 and this guy is 0.4, and in any probability distribution, all the probabilities have to add up to 1, then it must be true that this probability, that x equals 25, is 0.1. So these are some of the most common things you'll have to do in dealing with discrete random variables and their probabilities.